Welcome back to the PO3 Podcast. My name is Marcus Mark. Just John. What's going on, man? What's up, that was a good episode that we had. We just uh, wrapped up. Uh, so it's no secret anymore. We we uh, record two of these in the same day. So uh, that would have been episode… 42? 42. And this is episode 43. So uh, episode 42 and the, the previous episode that just released, uh, we were talking a lot about uh, this book here, uh, The End of Mental Illness by Dr. Amen. Um There was a lot of points that we went over. Like a lot of stuff. And a lot of stuff that we didn't touch on as well. Um, what was it? I don't know, man. What, what was your, uh, how did you, how did you take the stuff that we were talking about? What do you, what do you think? Like, where's your head It at? just, for me, uncovered a lot of the, the pitfalls that are within not only like psychiatric, you know, medicine or psychotherapy in particular, but just in general, you know, like the medical field and how I, I feel the biggest hurdle for us to co- to overcome when it comes to psychotherapy or just the med- the medical field in general is the insurance companies are in my mind it feels like they're dictating what help patients are receiving well, and according because, to the book that's exactly what's and, happening and based off the stuff that I've you know in the recent past I've come across that's it's like you got people that have no medical experience making decisions and they're so it just it blows my mind, man, because like you have a doctor that's genuinely trying to provide aid to somebody and they're saying, OK, like I need to spend two weeks with this person to really fill them out to give them the best proper treatment. And the insurance company is like, well, you're taking too long with this guy. So we need you to speed that up and get it done quicker. So you're, we're going to go to the 15 minute diagnosis or medication dispensing, whatever you called it. In the, it's a 15 minute med check. So it, to me, it's just kind of like undercutting the purpose of the of their field. You know, they're supposed to be. um helping people, but now they're being put on a timeline so they can squeeze in as, the, as many fruit through the door as possible, mm. you know? I don't like that, you know, because fortunately for myself, I don't suffer from any sort of brain health issues, uh, at least that I'm aware of, you know, and going forward as I get later in life, you know, I'm likely going to, you know, encounter medical conditions and I want the best treatment possible that's not dictated by someone that has that's only looking out for their bottom line and isn't looking out for patient care even though the 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 message they sell to us is hey insurance companies are the way to go we're here for you but they wouldn't be in the business if it if it, they'd lost money yeah you know what i'm saying so they're they're gonna try to cut corners where they can to make mac to maximize profitability and i don't like that how it's it's working its way into every avenue of 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 patient care and not not only that dude it's just like that's and we're we're talking solely based on ourselves, right? Our personal experience with uh our, the healthcare system, and uh, our treatments, right? That we're, we're receiving. Um, but now let's look even further into it. It's like, okay, what about your children? Imagine if this was your child. You exactly, know, for for yeah. those of you that do have children out there, I'm sure this is something that you could definitely empathize with. It's just like, imagine if this was your children, or or your child seeking and going through these types of problems, which is. Hundred percent real for a lot of people in, in, in the world, and they're going through this type of stuff, and they're looking at it as the parent, like they feel helpless. And it's like you're supposed to be relying on these systems to take proper care of your of your children and get them the the help that they need that's gonna uh, benefit them the most, and not and cause as many uh, little downfall as as possible. And, and we want it to be more positive than than it is harming, right? And it's just like that's not what's happening. <clears throat> yeah, I have like a coworker I work with. As a matter of fact, her son's maybe he's under the age of ten, maybe five through eight, somewhere in that category, and our age group. And he has leukemia, and he's constantly fighting. I guess they went through every treatment. And I guess he's on experimental treatment now. But uh, the issue she's having is insurance companies aren't willing to. They won't cover. I think if I remember correctly, experimental stuff, mm. which like is hol- holistic. No, just like stuff that it's still in the trial phase. Like they don't know if it's like you know, spec. Yeah, and so they're not going to cover it. And then I'm not going to name the hospital in our area, but a, a a a place here in our neck of the woods where if you guys probably know what I'm talking about, um, they won't touch him unless the insurances give the green light. So he's basically stuck there, kind of just in limbo, going through this very very tragic, you know, set of events. And he's not getting the proper uh, treatment for it. And then she's she's had a couple other like programs help her out with financing and stuff. 
but it's a very, very crappy part to be sitting there feeling helpless because there are potentially methods that could help her son, yet the money isn't there to help it, so he basically goes without. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, it's like you you pay into the insurance. You just figured, well, I'm sick. You're going to cover me, but that doesn't seem to be the case. But to get away from the insurance aspect of it, going into Dr. Amon's findings of where I sit with that, it's, you know, as you will call it, the uh, no shit moment <laughs> or yeah. movement, you know, it's just kind of like he's bringing forward a lot of evidence, in my opinion, that suggests that this should be the, at least, a, maybe not the path, but a path that's at least warrants looking into, to you know, to further patient care for the better. One of his quotes is like, if you don't look, how are you going to know? You know, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And so... Uh, to touch base on what we covered in the last episode, um, now he mentioned that there was people or the people in charge of whoever runs the DSM, if it's a committee of some sort or whatever. Well, it's, it's called the APA. So they're, they're in charge of the DSM, which they, they directly own. So it's like they're the ones who are saying that spec doesn't line up with the DSM and they're, they're, they're directly profiting from the DSM. So I... You know, I again, this is my me being naive, and I would li- love to believe that that's not the case, which it clearly sounds like it is. You know, but when you have somebody like Dr. Amin that's coming forward and having these new, dis- new dis- discoveries and saying, hey, look, like this could better treat people, which is the goal of practicing any sort of, you know, uh, patient care, you know, occupation is to help people. You know, you would think that. If they were going to refute it, they're going to refute it with evidence, not just because it doesn't align with the current standards that are set forward. Like, okay, this is clearly on to something, and he's clearly having the desired effect. People are, you said it's in this entire book here that's listed with examples and cases of individuals who have benefited from his new approach to this. It's kind of like, no shit, why aren't we doing this? Mm-hmm. You know, and the fact that you're refuting it just based off of, well, it doesn't go with our current standards, so therefore it's wrong and taboo. I don't I don't agree with like in the scientific community one of the things that all scientists that I follow say is like we like when people come up with stuff that refutes the stuff that we currently know as to be true or current or at least true to a certain degree because that's what progresses science you know you you have you have a hypothesis you test it you get results and then you have your peers go back and double check your work and see if you're like, no, it was, it was a mistake or there isn't enough evidence to support that yet. Keep doing your stuff until you figure it out or we're going to, or you're onto something, let's look further into it, you know? And the fact that they seem to be, well, like you said, the word taboo, you know, that this particular way of approaching it, which is proven to be, you know, rather successful in his regard. It's, it's kind of mind blowing that they're not taking this approach that he's, bring it forward or at least even looking into it you know considering it 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 just sucks because like again i'll quote it again it's a site at least this is what he says and from his perspective of it science advances through funerals but in this particular field um the only way that this thing is going to advance is if we just get rid of these people who are in charge and have that archaic type of mindset on this approach to Medicine. I, I want to read that that thing because I take a different, like I told you in the last episode, I take that as the death of the patient. Yeah. Well, because it, once it, enough people, both, once, once, it, once enough both. people, do, yeah, I agree. You know, uh, once enough people continue to die from misdiagnosis and stuff like that, only then will it raise awareness because, you know, well, my, my loved one went to this particular individual for a specific set of issues and yet they weren't maybe doing fine in their head, but they were still alive and now they're dead, whether it be from the pit, the medication itself, or if it was from, you know, suicide or something like that, it didn't help them. And had the, the, as a matter of fact, it had the adverse effect of what they were going there for initially. So it's a crazy book, man. This is, I mean, I want to read it myself just because like, this is super, super interesting stuff and interesting in kind of a sad regard, because it's kind of like, I feel like no shit. (laughs) <laughs> why isn't this the, the why isn't this like the the approach to it you know and personally for me it, it uh it sucks that it, it it took this type of experience for me to be able to gravitate towards something like this because the the further and further i got into my treatment process the more curious i got and the more cautionary i became about my my um Your my journey. treatment and my journey 
I was like, well, I need to be thorough about the stuff that I'm putting into my body. And like, I want to know the purpose behind their advice, right? And the things that they're advising me. And like I said, I always felt like something was missing. So this kind of pushed me into doing my research into like, am I the only one feeling this way? And like, what is it that is missing? And then here lies a couple of the answers that I'm looking for, right? And it's like, it sucks that you have to go through this type of stuff to to seek your own research. When re- this this type of thing should be already out there and, and uh, accessible to you without you having to suffer first. It's like you need to know what you're getting into. And then the, I would say another little point to your particular situation is the fact that you're living in it. Yeah. You know, so you have a particular person that's onto something and yet, you know, for, we'll just say, cultural purposes within the field of psychotherapy, this particular avenue wasn't explored for you and won't be explored for you. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like another another little stab in the back. Like, not only am I going through this crap and I'm trying to be cautious about it, now I'm finding out that there's a, a whole other approach that one that I actually agree with where they physically examine me and it's not even... If I were to bring it up to my doctor, she'd probably laugh. Exactly. Because this is definitely something that is more suitable for me and a person like me who overthinks everything rather than, here, I'm not going to question anything you're telling me. I'm just going to take these pills and I'm going to do this, this, and that. And hopefully that makes me better. And if it doesn't, well, I tried everything I I could have and it should have worked because that's what they told me, you know, versus me. I'm just like, well, what other options are there? And this being one of the other options out there, it just sucks because… This is something that I would like to do. It's like, I definitely want to go get a spec scan for myself and head over to Almond Clinics. It's just like, it's just not in the cards right now financially, but it's like, I'm going to do everything I can to get to that point. Like, I really want to eventually have a spec scan. And it's just like, and and in general, it's an important thing because spec scans will tell you a lot of what you need to know about your, your future. Like, they can detect Alzheimer's decades before that it even happens. They can see that within the spec scans of scanning your brain and everything. They can see if you're going to start developing Alzheimer's, you know. Uh, it's, what's, 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 it's, it's crazy is because like, uh, you know, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> It'll come back to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely something I want to do. Because I, I feel like, like I said, in general, it's something people should be looking into. Because it's like, if you can prevent something like Alzheimer's by uh, mitigating and diminishing the the use of like substances or anything. Oh, wait. I got it now. Okay, go Sorry. ahead. Sorry. So I saw this picture, right? It was, I think, of like an autopsy or something like that. Or was, but or maybe it was like a med student thing. But they took the top of the skull off a person. And, and whoever this person was, a doctor, I'm assuming, had this person's brain in their hand. And they were like, everything this person is or was is in my hands. Like, every memory they've ever had, every experience, every thought, like, I'm holding it, you know? And it's like, it's this big old pink mushy thing, right? Mm-hmm. And then to think that the first approach is we're going to give you chemicals in the form of a pill that's going to alter your very being of who you are. Like, your heart's going to do what it's going to do. Your liver, all that crap is that. It has a specific function, but everything that makes you who you are is in your brain. It's going to be tampered with. And it's gonna, and so you, to me, it's like that would to be, to be the last approach to… First do no harm. You know, if the first approach would be, okay, let's not alter who this person might, is. Because… Remember what you're saying. I'm sorry to cut you off. SSRIs directly affect your your character and your personality. That's exactly my point, and that's one of the reasons why I've always I've never got into drugs because it was like, dude, I'm literally going to be altering the chemistry of my brain. Yeah, and so, and that thought scared me, bro. You know? You're telling me this was my biggest because it happened to me once already, and I'm still not the same. I the last thing I wanted to do was tamper with that chemistry again, and that's my so exactly. I know it like it, it just seemed like to a lot of people just ingest the pill, right? Like even you said like you're just down the hatch, but it's like I'm looking at the months, months later down the road, like Well the reason I said that is because you've already done your fair share of research and you've already oh, come yeah, to of the course. agreement. I'm just saying, but the, those but, fears yeah. are what lie in the back of my conscience. It's just like, is this changing me? Like no, what exactly. is this gonna do? I'm the one like I'm blind here at night and I'm having these crazy side it's like 
that's the last thing I wanted to do. So it's like, of course, right? Like, why would you want to tamper exactly. with Exactly. So like, to me, as like a, as a as a professional, you would want, okay, we already know this is, this is an option. But, we we know the effects that this option can potentially have, so let's go ahead and try other means of approach. It should prior. be the last resort, you know, because like uh, unless like well in the medical field, they're not going to go straight to the the craziest thing that can kill you. They're going to try to do with the least amount of you know. They're not going to go if you have like an infection. They're not going to give you. All right, I guess it depends. They're not going to the, amputate your leg if you have a cut. Well, yeah, you know? exactly. Like if you have an infection and it's not like a uh, because they they say we're, we're over prescribing uh, antibiotics. Because now more they're they're overkilling it, and now the bacteria our, our is, immune systems are crap. No, not that. It's just the they're the bacteria are now developing resistance to the medi- to the antibiotics. So now something that worked in the past for you won't work anymore because they went with a higher dosage than was needed. Like you said, like you mentioned before, the uh, the mutating uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, what uh, E. coli, coli, right? Yeah. E. coli mutating. And that's the same thing with our bodies. It will mute, it will adapt to it and the, become the, less resistant. The the bacteria will. So it's yeah. like they're so what they're saying was that we were overkilling it with these these antibiotics, and now we're getting to a point where they can't produce them powerful enough to actually have the desired effect. And so what they should have done was give you just the appropriate amount that would have fixed the problem versus overkilling it, right? So that was another fear of mine becoming immune to and building a tolerance to medication. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, what happens when you reach your threshold and then your body just decides this isn't enough anymore? What do you do? Do you just keep bumping the dose? Yeah, and that wasn't even getting into like the the body aspect. I was just going based off of the ailment part of the thing, you know, because that's a massive factor, you know, is your body's tolerance is going to increase, you know. And uh, because I think they even say, well, like psilocybin, you know, the chemical, the compound that in shrooms, you, you develop a tolerance rather quickly yeah, to it. Yeah, quickly. And so, uh, leaving the human body out of that, just the the point I was trying to make with the whole, you know, antibiotics thing was they went for overkill versus the appropriate amount measured. So, to me, how that applies to this is like, okay, well, we already know that the medication that we can be prescribing could alter this person's being. So, let's try a scan where we can try something else. Or maybe we can directly impact them with a very, very specific medication and, and circumvent all the other, oh, well, we gave him the wrong meds for the wrong diagnosis and now his brain's fried from this and now we're going to change it to the, what it should have been from the beginning had we done a little bit more homework. Yeah, because a lot of the time... And that was just leaving out the effect of your body developing a tolerance to the medication. You yeah, know because saying? sometimes these effects from these pills are irreversible. Yeah, that's my point. So it's like, if you know this, okay, that's our last resort. Exactly, you know that's what I'm, what I'm saying. It should be. That's why. That's why. Like the most he mentioned, this is like page two. Like first, do no harm. That's a, this is if necessary. Yes, we will use medication, but first, do no harm. So let's let's just see what we're looking at here. Mm-hmm. Let's pop that hood. Let's pop the hood and then uh, pop the hood. <laughs> pop the hood. <laughs> Fast and furious. But yeah, pop the hood and see what's going on in the inner workings of the the engine. You know, because our brain is like our engine. It's what drives us. It's our CPU, and uh, in a huge way. And it's like if you're not investigating that thoroughly like I, like you said at best you're just you're 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 treating based off an educated guess you know yeah. and that's that's, and that's all you're again, doing and and that's why I appreciate the approach you took with your diagnosis is because you were trying to be as honest as you could with every question that they were asking you so they could accurately diagnose you with the appropriate diagnosis mm-hmm. so you get the appropriate treatment but if somebody doesn't do that and they're, they might be ashamed to answer a question as truthfully as they possibly could. I don't know what questions they ask you, but you mentioned yourself that sometimes people are less than truthful during these examinations and they get prescribed the wrong medication because they get their, the cluster of, of, of symptoms they fell into was different and now they're getting a different medication as a result of it. It's crazy too because a lot of people, if you don't train yourself how to be honest with yourself, it's a very slippery slope and there's a fine line right there. You can, a lot of people without even realizing it, embellish. Exactly. Embellish their symptoms without even knowing it. Like you ever hear that that term blow it out of proportion? Mm-hmm. Blown out of proportion. A lot of people will do that with themselves. That's why it's very important to make sure you're not over exaggerating your symptoms. Cause it, if if you if you tell the psychiatrist or yeah, the psychiatrist that you're dying of depression and you feel like killing yourself and really that's just something that you overuse. But I mean, and it's it's that real for a lot of people, but some people is just they they they, they embellish and they over exaggerate sometimes. And depending on what you tell them, they're going to give you the proper, you know, 
or at least what they think is the the proper treatment. And then it's like they're gonna over prescribe you. And then with his approach, Doctor Alman, to me, you if if you do have uh, something that's traumatic that was done to the brain, you circumvent that for the most part. Because now it's not like, well, hey, he's telling me this, but his brain injury is is saying this. Let's look into this mm-hmm. versus going s- s- solely based off of the, what you told the attending physician. You know what I'm saying? So, or psychologist, whatever you call him. So it's just kind of like psychiatrist. Yeah. So it's like uh, I feel this would also f- fix that kind of problem where a person's being either they're underselling it or they're embellishing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because you can't undersell either. You you it's like you have to be very, very specific and accurate at what you're describing to these psychiatrists. And like I said, I've I've said it a million times. It's hard for me to even understand that. And I had to learn over a long period of time of analyzing myself on how to convey this to to anybody. Because for the longest time, I like how much trouble was I having just telling you and trying to differentiate between am I baseline or is this the medication working? Right? Like it was really hard for me to decipher that. And it's like imagine for people who have had no analyzation on themselves and no training. It's like the first time that you meet up with psychiatrists, you're going to get some stuff wrong. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's a lot of people's only shot to go see a psychiatrist. So it's like it needs to be one and done. But a lot of times it's rare that you're going to nail it on the first time. And so I feel like his approach would kind of, like I said, circumvent that. Like if you're either overselling or underselling your 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 yes, condition, it, it, hey, well, we have, boom, there's a, an area of the brain that's affecting this particular mood and this has some signs of previous trauma. We sh- This is probably more likely the culprit versus what they're telling me, you know? And, and I feel like it's so important because now a lot of that hard work and that heavy lifting, it's not on you anymore. You're mm-hmm. sick, okay? And there's a doctor that's going to take care of this. You can now 100% comfortably and confidently rely on him if if this was more prominent to give you a diagnosis, like the doctor could just be like, I got this. Don't worry about it. This brain scan yeah, and like my my research, my experience is going to tell me everything I need to know. Just tell me what you're feeling as best as you can. We're going to do the scan and we're going to look at it. And here's this, this and that versus trying to like pry and pry and like, I need you to be honest with me, man. Like, tell me what it is that you're feeling. It's like, we don't need that anymore because words will only take you so far and a lot of stuff will get lost in translation, you know. Yeah, it's, I mean, this will I think, circumvent I think, that, like I, you said. I think you mentioned it earlier, uh, just maybe a few minutes ago. Um, taking like, uh, trying to convey what's going on in your head and and formulate the words to accurately depict what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Because like, I mean, hell, try it like when you when you write a song. Oh, yeah, it's a puzzle. You know what I'm saying? Or when you're trying to give a speech, or when you're trying to convey to a loved one, you're 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 expressing your love toward them. Trying to find the words to accurately depict what's going on in your head can be often difficult. And so when you have that kind of stuff going on in your head and you're trying to tell somebody, it might be hard to, you know, how to, you know what you want to say. You don't know how to put it into words. That's what you know? I'm saying. And, if you don't have the training. And remember the person I told you that's, that's close to me, that's affected by depression. Mm-hmm. Um, that's often a case that they have. They don't know how to put it into words to help me understand what's going on in their head you know what i'm saying so like i feel if there was an injury that was sustained this would more it would it would help that person because now it's taking like you said i'm going to the professional for help i shouldn't have to be the one doing it. you know what i'm saying so it's like hey we got the scan we went with based on what you said we seen this image on your brain this is likely what's causing it let's try this approach first like, you know what i'm saying like yeah it shouldn't be as the patient i'm worried about and unconfident in the advice that they're giving me. It shouldn't be like that. It should be, ah, a sense of relief, right? A lot of weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I shouldn't have to think this hard. I mean, don't become complacent and still be wary of what's going on with yourself. But it should. you should know that you be, if you're going to pay the, you know, this kind of money and, and a lot of your, your time and energy is going into this, this treatment, you should know that the place that you're going to is going to handle it correctly, right? You shouldn't have to be questioning the professionals, right? You shouldn't have to be questioning the approach that they're they're taking to uh, to treat you. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of the times, it's like I when I go in there, I'm I'm really 
unconfident and it, it, it shouldn't be like that. It, it should, I should feel comfortable going to a place to get treatment. And, and the fact that I have so many questions about it raises a red flag. It's a huge red flag. I mean, <clears throat> to be fair, though, it's kind of like… Uh, but I do overthink. Well, I mean, I, I'm in the same boat with you. I do that for everything. Uh, but like… <sighs> I don't know what's going on. I lost my train of thought again. I'm just saying like… If we knew that things were based on underlying actual neuroscience… I feel like as a population, as a, as a patient, as a human, as somebody who overthinks, I feel like that would remove a lot of that insecurity if I knew that these people did their proper homework. Now it came to me you know, with that. So I said, to be fair, like when you go, I don't know, let's just say you have diabetes, they know exactly what's causing your diabetic issue. You know, it's that there's not a lot of functions, I would say, that the pancreas does. Like we know what it's there for. You know, and when it's not working appropriately, they know how to, to, I won't say fix it, but they know how to treat it. With the brain, it's, it's, they don't know how memories are stored. They don't know how thoughts are formulated, you know, so it's kind of like, it's still like a big mystery. So, I mean, to, to that regard, it, it is kind of like charting in uncharted territories and then how every individual is different. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah. Every individual is like, it's like snowflakes, you know, everybody yeah. is different. So to me, and like, so the, 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 to be fair, that's also the, a battle I think that might be being overlooked, you know, at least by me, that, yeah, they are in unknown waters and they know what the function of the brain is. They know how it works, but they don't know the, they don't know the, how things are actually happen on a neurological level. You know, like there isn't a part of the brain you can go to, to, to visibly see memory. Yeah, yeah, it's you not tangible. Saying? So it's it, so that's also I think a hurdle that they're also trying to. But the the good part is, with stuff like spec scans, it does give you visible data. At that point, it does mm -hmm. translate into visible data, even though it's not tangible. When you're actually looking into it, the numbers will tell us, and, and then the you graphs. Got people, will then you tell got us. people like Elon Musk that's coming up with like Neuralink or Neuralink, whatever. yeah. Like, you know, that might be able to, like, bypass that little area that's damaged and they can reroute the neurons, to, you know what I'm saying? So that way… Well, yeah, well, so that's different than a lobotomy, but that was actually one of the treatments in here was, like, a lobotomy. It was, like, that's what they were literally removed. severing nerves that connect this part of the brain to this part of the brain to get rid of depression or whatever. I mean, late, to, later on, they found out that that's, like, permanently damaging people's mm -hmm. uh, character and personality traits and everything, like, permanently. But, yeah, Neuralink is something that would… Definitely. Like, just I, imagine. I, I wonder just, if that would be like, because I know he was talking about how like they would, whatever's obstructing the connection from that specific part of the brain to, I don't know, your left leg not working anymore because of an experience, like, you know, a car crash or something. Or they're going to, okay, we're going to make a new path for those. those yeah, yeah. Things. A new so highway. Maybe, so maybe that might be something that would even help with, you know, brain health where, hey, if there's a traumatic area with even without medication, like, I know surgery is kind of a big thing too, but. If they got good at it, hey, we don't have to give you medication that's going to alter your who you are anymore. We can just make a new highway for these these neurons to flow and the synapses between them. Boom, they fire new connection, new routes made, and that a healthy connection, not and, a damaged connection by you know depression and stuff uh, like stress. Th that or just you know like the medication having the you know numbing you, you know making taking away from your who you are as a person, you know, and so because uh, I. I Someone was telling me recently that one of their uh, nephews was on um, Adderall or a variant of it because he had ADHD and they said it just made him like a zombie. Yeah, Ritalin or Adderall, yeah. Something like that, one of the two. But, you know, um, that he wasn't who he was anymore. That was my mom's fear or my parents' fear rather of why they didn't want to put me on because they wanted to put me on Ritalin, Adderall when I was in third, fourth grade, man. And I was supposed to be on that stuff throughout my entire education, you know? Yeah, no, so I was like, you know, the, the, if it's impacting other aspects of life that are going to be detrimental to their overall progress as a, as an adult, a human, then I would see it being an issue. But if they're still doing good, like in school and things like that, then, I mean, I guess it's kind of like, uh, how do you make that decision? But like, hey, do I want to make sure that my, my loved one is getting 
the uh, fair ch- fair fight at life, mm. and we're gonna kind of maybe take away from his character a little bit. But now he's gonna he or she's gonna be able to go on and do you know good things and well, more. You, you gotta weigh the pros and cons though. You know, you know but is yeah, it doing more good than it is harm? But I was like, but if he's still functioning in like we'll just say school, you know, for a child functioning well, getting decent grades, not failing, and it or because. I failed in school. Like, I, I graduated, but my thing was I just didn't care. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't have something, like, that was mentally impairing me other than this is boring and stupid and I don't want to do it. Well, aside that, though, I mean, you've mentioned to me before in one of your classes that when you were, was it in your academy or something like that, you kind of took the reins and kind of like, if somebody didn't know the material, you found out 19 other ways to try and approach it to make them understand it. I mean, it, granted, yes. So, I mean, that could be an issue as well. But if, you know, the ADD or ADHD was playing a factor in inhibiting their ability to learn it in maybe 19 different ways, it, granted, if the teacher wasn't falling short of that, then, yeah, I would say that probably be a good, a good thing, you know what I'm saying, to get them through it. Because if their condition is not allowing them to, to maintain focus for more than a few minutes, then, yeah, I mean, they're not going to... My thing is, it's like, how far are they going to get in life once they get to the end? Yeah, they they are who they are. They, You know what I'm saying? But how much, how promising could life be? Because they're now they're, they're not able to focus on what's needed to get them through the next stage in life. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's kind of like a pros and cons thing, you know? But I, as a parent, that would be a, a terribly difficult decision to have to endure because it's like, okay, I, I'm taking my child, what makes my child who they are, and there's a potential that I'm going to take that away or a part of it from them. But now they're able to focus the school and they'll be better for it. And yeah. at a later point in life, if they want to get off it, they can get off it. But, this, you know, or do I let them be who they are and they may not amount to anything? It's like, do I take away that one part of a person that makes life worth living and that what makes life life, you know? Do I take that away and sacrifice that so this guy can, or your your child or your, you know, can get an A plus on a test, you know, or, or or do marginally better than they were before. Is like, is it worth permanent, like potentially damaging their, their personalities and their? Do you think, looking back on it, that would have been something that your parents, as difficult would have been to make that decision, should have made for you? I don't know. I can't say because even now thinking about it, and I was gonna, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I was like, maybe if it would have helped me, I would have been in a different position. Than I am in now because a lot of why I've been going through what I've been going through and the jobs that I've only been able to qualify for were because my education was horrible, you know, and because I couldn't focus. And a big part of the reason why I couldn't focus aside anxiety and stuff like that and whatever I was going through, depression, was because of ADD. You know, I couldn't sit down and focus unless it was truly interesting to me or unless I studied like this and actually got a highlighter and highlighted the whole thing so I can retain that. It's like that didn't work for me. It's like I wanted to bounce off the walls and thinking back now, it's just like, well, if would it would it have been worth the risk to at least try the medication to see? Like, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? I'll never know. Um, but if it would have helped me, then why not? You know. But I'm not. I don't know. It's it's one of those things where that's, the, that's what I'm saying. I'm just, still I on the want, fence about you know, it. Like, because I mean, maybe that would have just given you enough to to get you, you know, into that that next stage where you could have had more employment opportunity because you weren't going to be hindered by, yeah. you know, the the progress you made in school. You know what I'm saying? It's That's a tough question, man, because even now as in like an adult and I, I've been through it and it's just like, I still don't know what the answer to that question. Because if I have kids, I don't think I would want to put them on medication at a, at a young age and alter their brain chemistry at such a, a very... Uh, important stage in their life, like huge. Like they're de- this is their developmental years, and this is when their mind is most susceptible to anything. And their sponges is like any little, any alteration. A- any alteration will significantly change the, the path. I guess that's that's a that's a uh, I guess a trouble they don't teach you when you're going into parenthood about these types of decisions you make because yeah, there's no manual. Because to me, it's kind of like. The the like I said the trouble I'm having with it is if I were to have children of my own, do I sacrifice like I said a little possibly sacrifice a, a portion of who they are 
to help them get further later in life? Or do I let them be who they are and, you know, potentially them not get too far once they become an adult because they didn't have the ability to sit there and maintain? Well, well, that's the thing about… I'm not saying people with ADHD don't do well. I'm just saying, you know, like, oh, with, they with or without, you know, medication. I'm just saying… That just said that because your your parents elected not to do it. Yeah, you know, and I'm glad they didn't because I mean, I think one of the reasons that we've gelled so well is because we have a lot of similarities, uh-huh. and those similarities may not be there had you been put on that medication at an early age because it that wouldn't would have, have forced me to think this way. Yeah. You know, that or I mean, hell, maybe it would have worked and you would have had no adverse effects from it, but the potential lies there that it could be. That could be one of the effects. You know what I'm saying? So, And then here's one of the, the things. is just like, okay, let's go back to the root of this whole thing. If stuff like this was more easily accessible and say that this spec scan thing is what's going to make that paradigm shift, paradigm shift, then the questions that we're asking right now would already have answers to them. You know? Because we're still living in the, well, what if? We're questioning. It's like, well, it should be, not should be, and nobody nobody has to do anything. It's just luckily out of the kindness of people's hearts, they want to help, you know, and luckily there are people who are very, very intelligent that study stuff like this and find new ways to treat uh, patients. It's like, well, that stuff is available, but we need to get it out there to the people. So it's like, when I'm asking myself these questions or when my parents had to contemplate the questions, do I put my son on basically pharmaceutical methamphetamine as a child? It's like, well, hmm. It comes down to a little thing called options, right? It's like, well, at the time, this was the only option that they had that was available to them was stimulants, right? Ritalin. Like all, all, all of this spec scan stuff and holistic you know, meditation and it's like focusing and exercising and eating clean. Like none of that stuff was in the DSM at the time because that's what they were diagnosing me based off of, right? The DSM. None of that stuff was included. So it was like, as a parent, like if we, I'm not a parent. I'm just saying, if they had more options available to them, it would have made that question a lot easier to answer. And that's where this type of stuff is so important because if this stuff just got out there, it would prevent a lot of stress on parents and their decisions that they take. It wouldn't be, okay, well, the only option we have is to put your child on Adderall. It's like, no, we have this, this, and that. Let's let's start here, and then we'll, we'll weigh our options. Yeah, I agree. 100%. Like, there's, I don't think there's a way you can argue against that. Um, you uh, you now short is, on time here? No. Is okay. uh, the uh, spec scan, is that considered holistic? No, no or, I'm just or, saying, like, I was saying as a number of options. Oh, okay, okay Like, okay. like there is a holistic… Like, you could eat just blueberries and that would have fixed your problem or something like that. You know? Yeah, I'm like, just saying, know. like, having a, an array of options would be better. I'm just saying, like, if, if, if we knew that these options were out there, it would make our uh, approach to it a lot easier rather than, damn, it's either I give them the meds or I don't give them the meds. It's like there's no gray area in between. It's like there's no other approach to take. And, I mean, it could be in part two at the time. The maturity of this particular topic was very, very infant. That, well, that's what I'm saying, you know what I'm though. Saying? That, so that's like, why it's like the quicker that we can get this out to the masses and develop this type of science, it's like the easier it will become for future generations. So that's kind of what I wanted to quote earlier. Because like I said, imagine if this was your children. Um, you're not only helping yourself, but you're helping generations mm-hmm. of, of children that are, are to come. And because uh, he, he met somebody uh, who eventually became his wife um, and he eventually gave her a spec scan. And, and uh, one of his things that he quoted, he said, he said, over time, I realized that if I had helped her. Oh, OK. So he sent her to this doctor and he was uh, hoping that this doctor would help her. Um, so he said, over time, I realized that if he helped her, which he did, it would not just help her. It would eventually help her children and even her future grandchildren as they would be shaped as they would be shaped by someone happier and more stable. Meaning, like, if they grew up in a more stable environment rather than having to grow up around somebody who's constantly depressed, it's like you're directly affecting your child. Your kids are like sponges. It's like if, if you can just put them in a more healthy environment, that would 
that would greatly impact them. And and not only them, but it's like now they have a, a foundation that isn't cracked. So now they can go on and they can have kids of their own with, you know, a foundation that's not going to be cracked as well, you know. So I thought that was really important. It's like you're not only helping yourself, but you're helping generations. I got Potentially. You. And no, I'm not pressing time. It's just car salesman keeps hitting me up and doesn't take… <laughs> answer it. <laughs> I know I already did. I answered it yesterday. He asked when I was, hey, you can come in today? He's like, no, I told you yesterday. I'm going out of town. The earliest I can do is maybe Tuesday, if not Wednesday. And it's like, if you just went up on your messages, you would see that was the last thing that I told you. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Okay, we'll drive safe. Here's my, ask for me. And here's the address. I know where you guys, I contacted you guys. I know where you are at. You didn't call me asking if I wanted a vehicle, you know, but mm, yeah. Uh, anyway, no, so. I hate car salesmen. I mean, granted, they're just doing their job. Yeah. But it's like, what do you do, you know? So, uh, but anyway, I thought that was like a really important quote. And it's, that's why I brought up the… No, it's true, man. You it's know? like, dude, you're you're not… Just, you're affecting… This stuff affects generations of people. It echoes into time. And it's like… Unconsciously happens. Like, you, you don't even realize that this type of effect is happening. It's like a trickle effect. It's like, but if you can just… Like, again, going back to what Jordan Peterson said. It's like, if you can just change one person's life for the better it measurably changes yeah the, it branches outward you know uh makes the world a better place it measurably makes the world a better place yeah they, yeah exactly you know because i mean that's one person out of the billions that are here but that's that's still a measurable thing and all comes saying? it all goes back down to the, the the foundation though of things it's like if your foundation is cracked yeah the the structure is going to be unsound and compromised and and i feel like the children of this generation are the foundation of like America, like the future, right? That's the foundation. And if that foundation is cracked and flawed, then it's uh, yeah, it's, well, it's, mean, it's going to be compromised. And I'd it's like say we have like a oh like a sorry, I cut you off, but no, go ahead. Like a we have lots of cracks in our foundation. This is one one like, area we could fix. And, you know, at least that's I mean, like I said, I don't want to say definitively it's the uh, the the fix, but it's definitely. But it's a, it's definitely one that is at least worth. I mean, when I say looking into, it's not like, hey, I heard you, Doctor Armin, that was a great idea. But no, like I'm talking like, like really exploring what he's bringing forward. You know what I'm saying? From he said the APA, that's yeah. the chart. You know, like he's onto something. You know, and again, again, it just could be com coming from a completely ignorant area where I have no formal knowledge of this stuff. But it's it's. On layman's terms, it makes sense. And the fact that we're not already doing what he's putting forward is, it's like. <laughs> it, it, what, I, I'm, what I'm saying is I understand there's always going to be cracks in our foundation. It's never going to be perfect, right? Like physically or like a person mentally can never be level. Like how a structure can be level, you mm -hmm. know. It'll, it'll never be that way. But if we can mitigate the potentials, like yeah, the, exactly. the potential mm -hmm. downfalls, it's like. That's going to increase the likelihood that our future generations are going to be creating a better environment for their future, you know, going generations forward. and therefore creating a more comfortable and um, like efficient life that we're leading here on earth. It's like, just imagine, dude, like now that I know all this stuff and how greatly brain injuries affect our mood. And not only that, but like diet and everything, right? Like, just imagine, like, all the people that are out there driving around, walking around. You're passing them in the hallways every day that have gone through stuff like this, have cracked their head on the cement, got cracked in football, you know, got into fights, uh, are doing drugs and alcohol. They're just walking around like this. And they're, they're walking around, like, 20% of their actual capability. And they're constantly in a, in, in a, in a haze, in a fog, and not even knowing it. They're, they're unconsciously… Leading a life that is like, I don't, and I don't want to say negative, and it's just because I can't find the word, but it's just like they're not operating at their full potential. And it's like, just imagine if this stuff was more prominent, like if we knew this, how much more serious we would take our brain health, right? Like, how much more of a, a better world would it be? And just imagine if, like, a lot of these people that you pass in the hallways, like, took the initiative to go look into something like this so they can correct those issues and. You know, that dude, that, that shit might, like, get, like, in the future. Like, if enough people did this, like, that, dude, we can possibly get rid of road rage and stuff like that. Like, a lot of this, what you're seeing in, like, road rage is just, like, pent-up, built-up, you know, 
energy that people just reach their boiling points and it's for a reason. You know, not nobody is like clear-minded anymore. Everything is just so distorted. And 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 a lot of it is because of the these stresses in our life, you know. And it's just like if we can just somehow take away one one Im- stressor, just tamper that down like in a in a big way. It, it, I think it would just it would resolve a lot of issues. In other words, but just imagine that though. Imagine how many people that you've come across that have had brain injuries without even knowing it that it's now affecting them. And it affects Mm -hmm. their relationship with you, you know, not knowing it. Like, why is this person being this way with me? Like, why is this person this way? Like, why is why is he such? I think there's a lot more that goes into that question. But but I'm saying though, like, what if it is directly just because this guy? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It could be exactly. He doesn't know he's been depressed, or he doesn't understand that there is a part of his brain that controls his emotions and stuff that has been tampered with. You know, what if he doesn't realize that and that's why he's engaging with you in that, in that way? Because we've all met these people. Like, people are crazy, man. No, no, I understand. And I, I, I understand completely what you're saying. I just feel like for that particular question, there's a lot more pouring into that particular pot to give you an uh, an answer. You know, but um, no, I, the cool thing is about this, well, I shouldn't say cool, but like you said, you could be walking past, you put, you walk past these people every single day and they don't know that this is an option. Hmm. And so if it would be, you know, more widely uh, accepted or just people knew about it, at least then they have an option. Like, no, I'm good. I don't, I don't. Yeah. You can make that decision. You know, I don't want to do it, but like, Hey, I could be operating at a hundred percent when I'm operating at 80. Like, Hmm. You ever pull a piece of earwax out of your ear and you're like, oh, I can hear. Exactly. Well, no, but, but I've heard people doing that. But, but, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. imagine if it was the same for your thinking. Like, if you saw that that option on paper, like, huh, you can hear like shit for the rest of your life. Or you can actually have some HD hearing, mm-hmm. you know? And the same for your mind. Like, if if you can just like, hey, like, if you uh, if you put this amount of work in, you can go from this level of thinking and clarity to this. And it's like, which one would you choose? You know, and what I'm saying is that I feel like people in general have a lot more in common with each other than we actually think. You know what I mean? Like a lot of us are flawed and we don't even know it. Mm -hmm. Like this is just, it's because it's gone over the rate, under, over the, under the radar for so long. You know, I mean, for whatever reason, we just don't think that putting our kids into football isn't a bad idea. You know, and Pop Warner. Mm -hmm. It's just, but. In reality, that's the last thing you really want to be doing. Like, I understand that the NFL and football and and baseball or whatever is, like, the root of what makes America, America. And it's, like, our culture and our tradition. And this is what drives us. But it's, like, have you seen the Aaron Hernandez documentary? It's, like, the worst case of CTE that they've ever seen due directly to football, you know, because he's been smashed in the head so many times. And we're advocating a sport that is giving people brain damage, you know what I mean? And and making people's lives miserable. Yeah. And we're advocating that. We're just like we're cheering them on. Like, yeah, hit them harder. You know what I mean? Like, we, 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 we get up out of our seats when somebody gets, excuse me, we get up out of our seats when somebody gets cracked hard. Like, something primal about that, right? But it's just like, should we be cheering that on? I don't think that's a question and that can be answered. But but do do you see what I'm saying? No, I, I, like, I see the I see the point you're driving home. But I don't. I would say what people learn from sports is greater than that. You know, um, I'm not saying that I I want people to experience CTE or anything. Not like to that. each their own. What I'm saying is no. I see the if point. If the information's out there, you should be able to make that choice for yourself. That, that's what I'm but saying. Had, I, I'm wondering, like, if half of these people knew that, would they still have honestly, gone into it? Yeah. You think so? But but that's a personal choice. No, I just think because I feel, and I, I have a personal account of this, not with me, but someone close to me, where their father was living through them through sports because their, I get it. Their, their, their son was more gifted in this area and a lot of time and money was put into this particular, it was baseball. And um, at least that's how it was explained to me from another person and when I saw that I was like you know that does make some sense so I feel like if you had like an Uncle Rico dad type dad you know I want my son to do what I couldn't so well it does bring bonds amongst people 
Oh uh, yeah, but I would say like I feel like parents would be like knowing because I think everybody watched that Aaron Hernandez documentary because it was crazy, and I and there's still people signing their kids up for football and, but I know, dude, it's just. But I feel your approach. Those like at least have the information out there so you can make a more informed decision. So when your kid has, you know, crazy amounts of CTE and kills everybody, we you know why. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just I just feel like it would change the course of approach, like. And decision making. I just feel like the more information, the better decisions. You know, and I'm with that. You know, what I'm saying. But I'm, I'm just saying I'm not advocating brain damage. That's all, that's all I'm saying. It's just like I want I want people to think and operate as clear as they possibly can. That way, like, you, like, dude, anytime you go outside, especially now, it's just like you can cut the tension in the air. You know, you get on the freeway. Yeah, it's palpable tension. It's, for it's sure. just like, why? Life is already hard enough. It's like why don't why aren't we like trying to focus on enjoying this as much as we possibly can? Life happens in a blink of an I eye. I could dude. get into that, and that's a that, that's going to take us completely away from what we're discussing now because I I feel there's a big reason for that, and I'll just go ahead and say it. Uh, the word offensive, I think that's a big um, for for what for why there's so much tension amongst people, and and, and like because right now like. Oh you, yeah, we've talked about this yeah, before. You, yeah, you can't bring up a topic that might not offend somebody, and if it does, it's like it's it's a battle cry. You know, we're mm. we're going to war, and it's like we just can't sit here and freely discuss ideas and topics, and without like I I understand there's certain topics where we can talk about because like when people talk about law enforcement, I take some of the stuff they say offensive, but it doesn't mean I'm going to shut down the conversation and create that make that tension even more pronounced. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And so I think that's a big reason why you get the you said you can go outside and feel it and cut the tension with a knife, so to speak, because you know there's there's the, I think it's the current climate that we're cur- currently sitting in. I'm just saying though, like why make things harder than they need to be? It's just like, dude, let's just enjoy this as much as we possibly can. I mean, I know that's over a lot of people's heads, but it should be the goal, right? I mean, it's like you only for all for all I know, we only get this opportunity once. You know, and do I do I want to waste this experience that I have, this conscious experience and this uh, sentient experience that I have? Do I want to waste that on? Mil- so on, do I want to waste that energy on somebody that cut me off in traffic? You know, do I really want to w- spend my time fixating on that and festering over issues like that, or do I want to get as much out of this experience as I possibly can and become closer with others? It's like, I mean. When you say it like that, yeah, that you know, but but I feel all this stuff just kind of ties into that. Like it will help you see that bigger picture if you could think more clearly. I would say yes, in going based off the assumption that everybody has something wrong with them like that. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I mean, I'm just saying a lot but, of people. People do. are people are assholes. I mean, people are born psychopaths. People are born into you know these things, but. I agree that getting this out there that that this could even be argued this is just a whole separate like issue like that type of thinking like just expressing gratitude for you know and seeing the bigger picture that's I think that's a side you know I'm just saying like it happened to bring me along that mm-hmm. that thought pattern just because I don't know that's just how I think I, you know I, I'm with you like I think we as a as a I say we I mean as like as a people you know spend too much time fo- fixating on the negatives and and putting a lot of energy into something that doesn't prove to be fruitful in any capacity other than making you miserable. Yeah, it's you just know? like, and I, and I feel we do that as a, I mean, as a, as a, as a society, as a species, whatever you want to call it, we're really good at that, mm. you know? And I, I, I don't like cliches, but I can see the purpose of cliches because, I mean, they're true. Like, you, for all we know, no one's ever been dead for 20 years and came back <laughs> and said, hey guys, there's another there's another shot at this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, we only know that we have this one experience. And it's a very, very limited and very, very delicate and fragile experience. I mean, something as simple as falling off a skateboard can change who you are. That's what I'm saying. Um, you know, it's, it's crazy. You don't, like, when I got kidney stones and that was the worst pain I've ever been in my life, that was a very, very humbling human experience because it's like you walk around thinking every day you're invincible and then something like little tiny millimeter sized stones wreck your entire diet your day (laughs) or next couple days you know and it's like damn the human body is super fragile and it was something that i did and i wasn't drinking enough water you know what i'm saying i was drinking a shitload of energy drinks and so it's like here i am 
thinking, walking around like, ah, what's going to get me? And something huh. like that was crippling. You know what I'm saying? So it's funny that you mentioned that, dude, because. I think I did. I I think I explained this on the uh, a few episodes ago. It might have been thirty five, thirty six. But I remember. Remember, I was explaining to you that I was lying in bed with my fiance, and I was like, I haven't felt this way since I was a young kid. Yes. That 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 feeling of just complete helplessness and humble, just being humbled. Well, a lot of the reason why I am the way I am is because of those experiences and how humbled it it, it made me. Like I was. I had a huge reality check at a very young age and it changed the course of my life and the the way that I think. That's why I never brag. That's why I never start shit with anybody unless I feel like I'm offended. You know? Like I, I really try to pick and choose my battles and it's because of that. And for a long time, I haven't had that feeling. You know? And that's why I feel like I was always like, man, fuck this. Fuck everything. And I didn't want anything to do with life. And I didn't have any gratitude towards it. Um, that's why when I started going down this road again. And I started experiencing the stuff that I was experiencing. It scared me a lot, right? I developed that mentality of gratitude again. I found more. I found gratitude in this suffering. And I found that it made me a lot more humble. And I, I forgot that I could be that humble. Right? You forget what it's like. And as twisted as it may be, that pain and that 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 suffering that I was experiencing was like, I can almost, it's almost just worth it, you know, just to be this humble and this like, I just felt more kind-hearted, you know? It was almost worth it. It was almost like, damn, I missed this. You know, it was almost like, I needed this. You know what I mean? It's because you forget. You, yeah, you walk around like you're invincible. You, you, you forget how fragile it actually is. And then once that's stripped away from you, it's like, oh, shit. Like, I'm nothing. Yeah, it makes yeah. you see the bigger picture, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, you know, where I'm at with that. You know, it's just that's why, like, you know, like you said, cliche is only you only get one life, you know, right into the wheels fall off. But it's like… Maybe, but… No, but like, I mean, you hear like, I'm saying you hear that like cliche, but it's just kind of like… But there's some truth in that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Maybe not to that particular degree. Just do whatever the hell you want, whenever you want. But well, it depends on how do you want to go out. Is it if it's, you know, guns blazing or cautious? Like, what you pick? No, it just depends on the situation, man. It depends on the individual too, though, right? Uh, yeah, greatly. I'm just saying, just like, I don't know. There's, I've been at a lot of instances. I've had a few instances in life where I felt like the end was near and I made my decision on how I was going to go out. I, I just hope know, that… But, uh, I just hope that the, if there is somebody judging us, that it's based on the true intentions of our hearts, you know? Like, if if that's really what it is, I just hope it's based off that, you know? Because I feel like at the core of everyone's being, yours included, that uh, their intentions are are mostly good, you know? Because I've, I've fucked up with good intentions before, you know? I've, I've, I've had good intentions and still fucked up. I think a lot of people have, you know? But... All that to say is that you don't, we don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. But that's why it's just like, enjoy the shit out of it while you can. And I'm starting to see more and more now that, uh, and this is not just me saying this or trying to, you know, sugarcoat anything or, or gain, like, I'm not looking for anything when I say this. It's just like, I really feel like more and more I'm starting to see that life is like more of like a gift than I, I'm, than I, than I ever thought before. You know, I'm I'm starting to see it as just way different now. Oh yeah, I mean, you can you can dissect that and make it even more profound than that. Just like it, it's a gift because if your parents didn't conceive you on that day and at that time, you there might be a version of you like they would have still had a kid, but that kid isn't you because it was that very specific egg, that very specific, you know, sperm cell that met. Or was, the one that drilled further. I was before, the fastest you know? one. You know, like, yeah. I mean, that's literally how it goes, you know. And so, like, and that's just one tiny little thing that made, gave you this gift of life, you know. Because had that been any different, any moment sooner, any moment later, there's a potential that it wouldn't have been you. Mm -hmm. You know. So, I was like, wonder what the fuck. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, fiance is sneaking out. <laughs> Hold I was on. like, are you leaving? Okay. Well, we're basically done. So, go ahead. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's just, just talk. I was like, what the? And I just seen like something moving. I was like, the hell is going did it throw on? you? Did it throw you off? No, I just. I just felt back as you were saying something. It just caught me off guard. I was just like, then I seen hair. I was like, what the? <laughs> uh, I was. I'll just duck. Go under the camera. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting topic, though. No, but it's true, though. Like, it, like, we'll never know, though. It's just like, I don't know. We'll never know. That's why, like, I don't know. I'm just grateful for what I have and what I've been through because it's it's opening my eyes. And a lot. I feel like I said, like, a lot of people don't ever get that opportunity to have their their um their their lens unfogged. Like, you know what? I disagree. I feel like that presents itself in a vast amount of time just people ignore it yeah it's out there they just don't read between the lines because er, um, unless you have zero family unless you have you know because you're not going to experience someone getting sick around you or you know what I'm saying like there's there's so many situations that humble a person in that regard and it comes to you whether you want it or not and whether you it's choose like to you take it. Exactly. So I feel like that. That's why I disagree. I feel like everybody has an instance in life where there was a moment that could have humbled you or should have humbled you and you just ignored it. Some people are just more hard-headed and it takes a lot more time. I'm just very blessed that I have uh, that's been, what, yeah. been able to think this way at such a young age. Um, we'll go ahead and wrap this up, dude. We're gonna. We're done anyway. Dude, we're done. So. Yeah. Um, okay, we're... We're going to wrap it up right now. It's been a great episode. Uh, John has to take off. Uh, something came up. But um, we're done anyway. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the PO3 podcast. Uh, we'll catch you guys next Monday. Uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, my name is Marcus Mark. Just John. Thank you for coming through. Yes, sir.